Millions of men are suffering from a little known medical diagnosis that quadruples their risk of having a heart attack and quadruples their risk of having cancer. You could be among this number. This video is gonna walk you through as I tell you a story about my friend Stan and his experience with a local healthcare provider, what Stan was told, what Stan actually had versus what he was diagnosed with, and what you can do if you suffer from this little known diagnosis to actually reverse it completely and erase your quadrupled risk of heart attack and quadrupled risk of cancer. I'm Dr. Ken Berry, a family physician with four, 20 years, not 40, not yet, I'm not that old, 20 years of clinical experience. And this video is gonna explain it all to you. So here's the story of my friend Stan, and you might find it very useful because it might apply to you. Stan is 41 years of age. He's relatively healthy. He doesn't have any complaints, really. I mean, life is life and stress is stress, right? But overall, he considers himself pretty healthy. He doesn't take any medication. All of his family members seem to be pretty healthy. And so he thinks that he is at very, very low risk of developing any kind of medical problem, right? That makes sense. So Stan starts dating this person and Stan's new partner is quickly falling for Stan because he's a pretty likable guy. And this person kind of freaks out and says, you know, you're 41. Maybe before we go any further and get any more serious, maybe you should go to the doctor, get checked out and make sure that I'm not about to fall in love with a guy who's gonna have a big fat heart attack or develop cancer in a few years, and then I'm stuck with that mess. Uh, Stan hates going to the doctor, but Stan really likes his new partner, and so decides, you know what, just to keep the peace and go along to get along, I'm gonna go to my local doctor who I haven't been to since I was 11 years old, since I fell down and cut my head. Uh, I'm gonna go see my local doc and get checked out just to make you happy so that we can proceed further down the road. So Stan does this. Stan makes an appointment, which is a pain in the butt. Stan waits in the waiting room for an hour and a half, which is a pain in the butt. Uh, and Stan finally makes it back into the hall where his vital signs are taken and eventually makes it into an exam room where he makes he waits another 35 minutes. Yet again, pain in the butt. Finally, the doctor walks in and says, hey, Stan, you've grown up to be a fine looking young man. What seems to be the matter? Stan relays the story about his new partner who wants him to get checked out. And the doctor says, well, okay. And the doctor's thinking, well, Stan hasn't been here in over three years, so he's technically a new patient. That's a higher charge. And he wants an annual exam or preventative visit, which is also a very tasty charge for a doctor. And in the process of that, I can order an EKG and a chest x-ray, which are also additional charges. So the doc doctor's understandably very happy to see Stan, uh, much more so than Stan is happy to see the doctor. So the doctor has Stan undress, and uh, this is a picture of Stan. Uh, the doctor says, okay, you know, you look pretty healthy. Hop up on the table and let's do a physical exam. The doctor also takes a complete past medical history, a family history, a social history, uh, all of which are negative, normal. There's no family history of heart attack or cancer. There's no, there's no social history that might increase his risk, uh, no surgical history, the history's fine. Uh, but what the doctor missed on Stan is that he, he's a little pudgy around the middle, isn't he? Not bad by modern standards. I mean, he looks pretty normal, looks better than most people actually, but you see that little bit of pudge around the middle? That's called central adiposity. And actually Stan's waist to height ratio is 0.6. And so that, that's a risk factor for this condition that we're talking about. But because overall Stan looks pretty healthy, the doctor did get his weight during the vital signs, but he didn't measure his waist circumference at the biggest point on Stan's midsection. So he missed this huge risk factor for heart attack and cancer. Also in his vital signs, his blood pressure was a little bit high, not terribly so, but a little bit high. Uh, but since Stan looked like he felt so great and really didn't have any complaints, he was only here because his partner made him come, the doctor says, yeah, it's probably, he was just under stress, no big deal, and makes no big fuss about his slightly elevated 
blood pressure. Then the doc uh, completes a thorough physical exam, which includes a rectal exam, which Stan's none too happy about. The doctor's also uncomfortable, but many times doctors feel like as part of the theater of performing a physical exam, even if a test is completely unwarranted, unnecessary, and actually contraindicated, they'll stu still do things like a rectal exam, so it really looks like they did a thorough job. So after that, uh, Stan is feeling a little mortified and the doctor sends him down the hall for an EKG and a chest X-ray. Both of these come back completely normal, which is reassuring to both the doctor and to Stan. But the problem is, is that most patients and many healthcare providers don't understand that an EKG and, an, and a chest X-ray, they don't show you the potential for things happening in the future. They only show you evidence if something is happening or has happened. So very, very often an EKG and a chest X-ray can give a doctor a false sense of security that their patient is perfectly safe when in fact nothing could be further from the truth. The doctor then has Stan get dressed and sends him down to the hall to the lab to get some blood drawn and to check a urine specimen. Since Stan is so young and so healthy, the doctor's gonna do his limited regular routine exam in the lab which will consist of a basic metabolic panel, a complete blood count, a urine analysis, and a lipid panel. And that's it. There will be no more testing because there's really no indication as far as the doctor is concerned, okay? So when uh, a, a week later, Stan, who's back home, uh, he's already told his partner that the physical exam looked great, his history was great, chest x-ray, EKG, great, so they're both feeling much better about Stan's overall health. He gets a call from his doctor and the doctor says, hey Stan, I just wanted to call you and uh, update you on your lab results. I checked everything, not true. They actually checked a very limited amount of labs. Uh, and with this lab panel, multiple things could have been missed. And he says, your blood sugar was a point or two high. Now, that's not a big deal, don't worry about that. Your triglycerides were a few points high and your HDL cholesterol was just a little bit low. But, I mean, that's pretty normal for most people your age. Not a big deal. Don't worry about that. And so Stan gets off the phone feeling 100% safe and confident that a heart attack or cancer is decades and decades down the road for him. He's perfectly healthy. Nothing to worry about. Problem is the doctor didn't check a hemoglobin A1C and Stan's was 5.7, but nobody knows that because it wasn't checked the doctor did not check a C-peptide and Stan's was 4.6, a little bit elevated, showing that he has hyperinsulinemia. Uh, his fasting insulin level would have been 25 if the doctor had checked it, which he did not. Uh, Stan's GGT, which is a kind of a liver and heart lab check, was 67. But again, the doctor didn't check that, so nobody knows. Stan's uh, high sensitivity CRP was elevated at 2.3. Again, neither Stan nor the doctor nor Stan's new partner know this because the doctor did not check it. So Stan has all five markers for a condition called metabolic syndrome. And now Stan's doctor may recognize that term if you said it to him, but he would not know the five diagnostic criteria to be diagnosed and you only have to have three out of the five in order to be formally diagnosed with metabolic syndrome. Now, you may have never heard of metabolic syndrome, but it's a huge deal because if you are diagnosed with metabolic syndrome, the things that are causing your metabolic syndrome also cause you to be at a four times greater risk of having a heart attack, an early heart attack. Not a heart attack when you're 90, but a heart attack in your late 40s, early 50s. Also, uh, Stan's metabolic syndrome puts him at a four time greater risk of developing cancer in his 40s, 50s, or 60s. Uh, Stan is completely unaware of this because his doctor said, we have checked all your tests and you are healthy and normal. I'll see you next year. And oh, by the way, his doctor did give him advice um, based on his tiny elevation of blood sugar and his, his tiny elevation in triglycerides and his HDL being a little low. His doctor told him to eat more whole grains and to try to avoid steak and bacon and egg yolks, and that would help his HDL, and to try to jog several times a week, that that ought to, that ought to help him with that little bit of pudge around the middle. Uh, problem is, this is terrible advice. This advice in no way will even treat Stan's metabolic syndrome, much less reverse it. That's a big problem. Now, uh, if you're saying to yourself, gosh, I've got a 
lot of the same things that Stan's got, uh, you probably have undiagnosed metabolic syndrome, which gives you a four times greater risk, greater risk of having an early heart attack and a four times greater risk of developing an early cancer diagnosis. This is a big deal, and I want you to know what to do about this. Now, since Stan's bill of health was 100% grade A on his exam, uh, even though the doctor said, you know, come back in a year and we'll recheck everything and make sure you're still normal, Stan didn't do that. Uh, Stan and his partner went down the road. They, uh, they became engaged, got married. Four years after this uh, meeting with his doctor, Stan had the first of his many heart attacks. Yeah. Now, are you ready to find out how to reverse metabolic syndrome? Well, I'm going to have a video pop up right here that you can click on and watch after this video is finished, and it will tell you how to reverse metabolic syndrome. There's no pill on the market that can reverse metabolic syndrome. There's no amount of exercise that's going to reverse your metabolic syndrome. If you follow the doctor's advice and eat lots of whole wheat and avoid saturated fat and jog several times a week, your metabolic syndrome, in all honesty, is probably going to get worse. Yeah. So watch that video and then you will know how to reverse your metabolic syndrome, even if your doctor hasn't diagnosed you with it. Now, please, if you know someone who's got a little pudge in the middle and has a high blood sugar reading every now and then, please consider sharing this video with them. You could literally save their life, save them from having an early heart attack or from having early cancer, all of which having metabolic syndrome puts you at four times greater risk of developing. This is Dr. Barry. I'll see you next time.